So we're here today to talk, to talk a little bit about uh, traditional project management and how to combine that with the uh, agile way of working. And here today is me, Therese Lexon from Venel's Malmö office and... And Mats Neumann with the Venel office in Gothenburg. So we're both from the IT industry from the beginning. Yep. And in the IT industry, it's very well known with the way, agile way of working. Uh, but it's also getting more and more common in other industries. And we often get questions about how can we combine the traditional project management with the agile approaches. Yeah. But before we start to talk about the agile approaches, maybe we should just define what we mean with traditional project management. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because most organizations and companies have some kind of structure for how to handle project management, like a project model quite often consisting of, of some kind of stages and, uh, and mm -hmm. gates, you know, yep. phases or stages where we are supposed to do certain types of work, like a pre-study to investigate uh, different mm -hmm. options, uh, how to, to progress in, yep. with this idea or this problem that we have, mm -hmm. uh, some kind of planning or initiation phase where we kind of plan and set targets and objectives and, and uh, do risk analysis and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then to realize the project to, in the end of the de realization phase, uh, deliver the results and hand over uh, to customers and receivers and so yeah. on. And then to close the project down, to summarize our lessons learned, to maybe do some post calculations and stuff like that to, to investigate, okay, how well did we do? Yeah. So all that is very good. Also, we need, you know, structure and clarity about roles and responsibility areas and so on. So uh, role descriptions, templates, how to document different mm -hmm. parts of the project and, and uh, uh, um, stuff like that is, is quite often content of a generic project model within that company. Or for that matter, in some organizations where we do product development, we might have pro product development processes to follow and so yeah, on. Sure. Uh, so all that is very good, but uh, also some problems can occur. <laughs> yeah, we've seen uh, that. <laughs> yeah, uh, so if, if we live in the belief that we can kind of investigate all, all expectations and needs in the beginning to clarify requirements for the project and setting clear objectives and plan the project from A to Z, uh, very often uh, we find out that things are changing. The customers and, and uh, the stakeholders with different expectations and needs kind of change their mind along the way. Mm -hmm. And we are not that eager to take in that kind of yeah. uh, change requirements along the way because we want to do as we kind of plan from, from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Quite often a real common phenomenon is also that we, we deliver a lot of things in the project. And in the end, when we deliver maybe a year after the start mm. or, or whatever, uh, we find out that those items that we have delivered or some of them is not really asked for and, yeah, and, exactly. and demanded. So, so we have spent time and resources to developing stuff that is not lang longer asked for. Yeah. So that, that's of course a, a big problem. So um, yeah. yeah. We have so some... one of the approaches from the agile world is to work with successive deliveries to try to divide it into smaller bits and pieces yeah. so that we can deliver early and uh, create benefits and give the receiving organization the opportunity to use some parts of the result early on. So we both give them an opportunity to use the result, but we also give, get feedback yeah. back to the project, right? Definitely. And, and f short feedback loops, really important to yeah. understand, are we on the right track? Have exactly. we interpreted your expectations and needs in, in a correct way? Yeah. Uh, so, so a lot of response, a continuous dialogue with the mm. coming users and, and important stakeholders. So we can, with big ears, listen to, okay, the stuff we have done so far, is this what you expected? Mm. Or have we misinterpreted something and we become aware of uh, changing requirements and, and uh, misinterpretations much earlier than the traditional way? Yeah, and that's a, there's a concept called, or you often say embrace change within Agile, which maybe gives the chills to someone working in traditional project management, but that's just because we want to produce the best result we can for the customers. Yeah, yeah, so if, yeah. the, 
need changes, we need to adapt to that, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, and also, again, to, to highlight that fact that we, we increase the knowledge about the project all, all, all yeah. along the way in the project. Exactly. Initially, quite often, we know not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, as we progress in the project, we learn a lot. And yeah, again, things might change around the project. So um, to use that new knowledge to the benefit for the project. Um, yeah, and that way we can push the the decisions about the details until we have more knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also a really good, uh, uh, yeah, a Benefit good positive from effect from from yeah. uh, shopping the project up into s several sub parts. Yeah. Another thing related to working in iterations or in sprints, as Scrum call it, is often that you you uh, uh, you take the opportunity to think about what can we do better. Mm. work with retrospectives or mini lessons learned, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But you sit down and reflect upon how can we produce things in a better way, work in a better way with our methods or processes, and also how can our, our work together become better so yeah. that we can benefit from our learnings yeah. along the way. Yeah. Uh, well, so. not like we usually do it in traditional project management that we push it until the end and mm. we do a final lessons learned and someone else can yeah. can gain benefits from, I, uh, from if, we do it. if we do also it. Also a really yes. common phenomenon that you actually crap that or the time is up, we, we have spent the resources we, yeah. we, uh, according to, to the frames we have uh, or the limits. Yeah. So uh, quite often that is not done in a good way. And yeah. if not done, we cannot benefit from, from the learnings. Mm. If we do it continuously, really good to, to as you said, both improve along the way, but also to, to highlight what, what is working quite good. Yeah. That yeah, we shall exactly. continue with in, in the yeah, same way. And, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in, no matter what kind of project you have and what kind of project uh, management model you have, you can always uh, take a break and reflect on how you're working and, and improve yeah, along the way. Yeah. 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 Also, um, an important kind of uh, principle in Agile is to uh, uh, si simplicity. Mm. Uh, sometimes we speak of the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. Exactly. So also, if we continuously reflect upon the ways we are working, we identify, is this really uh, value-adding and, and beneficial yeah, for, for us? Or to kind of cut away non-value-adding parts. Yeah maybe to question unnecessary uh, documentation that yeah. is really not that uh, important. Of course, we shall document uh, what's needed and, and have good clarity and good you know, quality and testing and verification and stuff like that. But, also yeah, but sometimes you only document because it's a habit. Yeah, it's something yeah. that you always do and you yeah, don't yeah. reflect upon what value does this add? Yeah, Who's yeah. going to read it? So um, maybe to reflect a little when we work in agile ways, uh, what needs to be documented and, and instead communicate a lot. Yeah. Um, and in, in, in communication, when it comes to, to uh, agile ways of working, a really well-known kind of uh, uh, thing uh, mm. is, is that you have different types of quality in different kinds of, of uh, communication. Like we write a lot, documenting stuff. Mm. But if we can talk to each other to, to collaborate and, and cooperate in a good way, to communicate with face-to-face -face communication, that's yeah. more much more efficient and, and effective. Yeah, exactly. And we can see a, a couple of kind of different uh, meeting structures or mm -hmm. artifacts when it comes to Scrum, for example, when we use face-to-face. -face. Yeah, we, for example, we have the daily stand-ups. Yeah. So, if you work in another kind of project and it's not a 100% a, a agile project where you want to do it daily, you can of course do it twice a week or something yeah, else. But, yeah. but the meeting is just a short meeting, 15 minutes, you're standing up, uh, you're updating your Kanban or whatever visualization you have of the progress in the project. And you ask yourself uh, three questions. So what did I work on yesterday? What am I gonna work on today? And do I see anything hindering me from doing my job or the team from doing their job? Yeah. So you get that continuous transparency in, 
in progress and yeah. what everyone else is yeah. working on. Really good. And also to, to have an, an agile, more like servant leader or, or manager yes. that observes different kinds of problems and try to solve them. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. so, so make sure that the team has the best possibilities to actually do their work in an efficient way. Yeah, exactly. So uh, also um, when we start to plan a sub part of the project, mm -hmm. also face to face together with some kind of representative who actually knows what is beneficial in, 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 the, yeah. in the receiving side that will use the result of the project. Yeah. And also in the end, when we are done with a certain part of the project, mm -hmm. you know, we demo, we ask important stakeholders to come and take um, take part in this demo of the stuff we have done so far. So we get direct feedback. Uh, which, are the, which is then used for prioritizing and choosing what you want to include in the next iteration. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also in the end of each sprint or, or iteration or time box or whatever you would call it, as you spoke of before, to summarize lessons learned from this part mm -hmm. in the project. What shall we continue with and what shall we do differently the next episode in the project to, to improve our ways of working continuously. Yeah. So if you're in a tr more traditional project management setup and you want to be more agile, so if we summarize, what are our main takeaways? Main takeaways, uh, sub parts of the project instead of one big bang delivery in the end, if yes. possible to do successive deliveries. Yeah. To summarize lessons learned as we go to get feedback from different yeah. stakeholders Continuous continuously. Yeah. Um, yeah, face-to-face -face, uh, communication when when applicable. Sometimes visualizing a lot. Yeah, transparency and get access to information so all the team members can actually, you know, be a little like the three musketeers. Yeah, all, all for one, one for all. Exactly. And take responsibility for different actions and and hopefully get a good teamwork, a good team spirit in 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 uh, in the team or in the project. Yeah. So you can say whatever project you're in, you could always benefit from being more agile. Definitely, I, I would say. Not yeah. maybe to use all the principles. There are more than we have kind of touched now. Exactly. But, but uh, these are a couple of, of uh, things and, and you know ways of working that is really efficient in, I would say, all projects. Yeah. So uh, go out there and, and try it out. Be inspired. Uh, if you want uh, more inspiration, you can also check the Vanel YouTube channel. Uh, we have some additional stuff there. So, uh, yeah, try things out. Yeah, and be agile, try them, improve. 